What do you lose when you lose a language? You lose everything. This shotgun approach is just going to lead us to our grave in terms of our language. Sometimes people think of language learning as a chore, like, oh, we gotta do this, you know, we should do this. No. If you take the language out of that, you know, equation, then can you call yourself a nation? My name is Logan Purley. I'm Wolfstigal from Nagukuk, or Tobik First Nation. For the last two years, I've been attending the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, advocating for my people's territory. I met people from other Indigenous nations from all over the world. While many were introducing themselves in their mother tongue, I was only able to in English. Like most Wolastigwig in my generation, I'm not a fluent speaker. Our language is in danger. The federal government says that out of 9,000 registered members of our nation, there are as many as 950 speakers in New Brunswick and Quebec. But many believe the situation is more dire. I'm, I'm wondering what that point is that one, one's language needs to reach before everyone says we've got to do something about it. Even here... Andrea Bear Nicholas is a longtime language activist and historian, and her research has been essential to the language development in Wolustaguk. She takes issue with the way the Canadian government reports the number of speakers in Wolustagwe communities. Statistics Canada breaks down language data in three ways. Indigenous languages first learned, Indigenous languages spoken at home, and general knowledge of Indigenous languages. So I would fall under the last category, with knowledge of Wolastigwe, but so would fluent speakers. Andrea said there should be more focus on fluency, which could paint a clearer picture of the severity of the situation. Somebody said 10 years ago, um, 9 years ago, that there were only 60 speakers of our language in New Brunswick, in um, speaking Maliseet. If it's 60, if it was 60 then, we're down to half that easily. There are some communities that have no speakers. Practically every death that we've had over the last 10 years has been, the majority has been speakers. I'm not having a lot of hope right now that we're going to be able to pull it off here in time before our best speakers are gone. Ron Trombley is the Kachis Agam, or Grand Chief, of the Wolusta Grand Council. He's an advocate for our language, our land, and our waters. He says the three are all connected. We are the Wolastok Kewiyik, which the word derives from the river Wolastok, which translates to the beautiful and, and bountiful river. And being Wolastok Kewiyik, it kind of defines who we are and what our responsibilities are to that river. And as one of the, el the elders uh, always says with, in our ceremonies, uh, he says, I am the Wolustug and, and the Wolustug is me. A nation has to have um, land or land mass. They have to have language and they have to have um, some form of spirituality and, and, and a social consciousness of a, some sort of governance. So if you take the language out of that, you know, equation, then can you call yourself a nation? A nation without a language? Um, I think the, la the language is the, the core of who we are. In 1605, the very first thing that Champlain did was to rename the river Wolastuk to Saint Jean. In Ron's mind, the renaming of our traditional territory was an assault on the land and an assault on our language. He says actions like this threaten our way of life. Our language is our entire identity. The first thing that comes to mind when somebody says, what do you lose when you lose a language? You lose everything. Imelda Purley is a well-respected elder within the willis Nation. She is a spiritual leader and Wolastigwe linguist who has been teaching the language for many years at the University of New Brunswick's Mi'kmaq Wolastigwe Center. My Wolastigwe name, you know, a blossom was 
You know, I was used to that, but going to school, you weren't allowed to use your language. So I had to use a Christian name, you know. Um, uh, and, and so it takes away who you are, you know. And when you think about how our language has been attacked environmentally, uh, all the place names, well, us took being St. John now. Everything's been so anglicized, it's almost as if um, uh, even our environment of that that um, uh, we live in is changed too, so we don't think of it as ours because it's been renamed. So it's a theft of our culture, theft of our of our everything, you know. And so for me, language isn't just a subject. It can't just be a classroom. It can't just be a teacher in the front of the class using the language to students who then go to the next subject. That's when it's treated like a subject. Imelda is bringing the language to the people, wherever they happen to be. She leads ceremony, speaks at public events, and even tweets in the language. Dara Beaver is the director of education for Nagukuk. She's been working in education at the community level for around five years and is working towards a PhD in education focusing on language revitalization. Nugukuk offers Wollastigwe courses to kids in every grade level. The course is optional in middle and high school, but at the elementary school, parents have a choice. When we surveyed parents about why they're sending their kids to a provincial school versus the band school, and um, one of the main answers was because they can learn French in the provincial school, and you don't teach French language. So um, I understand that's a personal choice, and but at a conversation, I would ask, why do you privilege French language over having your child learn uh, Willistiquay language? And the response was, well, I want them to have job opportunity. And if I only expose them to Willistiquay language, uh, they're going to be limited in the possibilities for them. And that's a reality. Um, it's not seen as an incentive anywhere outside of a First Nation community to have your Indigenous language. Um, what's lacking is that We've never come together with all the various expertise in one room to say, what is it going to take to strengthen the current speaker's ability, pass that on, transmit that knowledge, and um, start getting children speak in the language again. And I think that's all of our goal. You know, it would be a long-term goal of myself and probably other language um, uh, activists and educators to, to bring a, an immersion program to Tobik. So how was the language thing? The closest thing to immersion for adults is a program at the community's new language center. They've just completed their very first module. Maggie Francis is a mother of two from Nagoku. She is someone who didn't grow up with the language and is now on a journey to reclaim it. Part of that journey was taking the new adult immersion program. I never grew up with the language and I never really had an interest in learning it until I had my boys. The fact that, that I'm a mom now and I have time to do this and I don't have any more excuses because it's not up to anybody else for me to learn my language. That's only my responsibility. So I, I want to take ad advantage of like all of the opportunities that are going to come to Tobik that are related to language and just going and speaking Malasi every morning. That was something to look forward to. It was the best way to start your days. And it was a lot of like storytelling too. A lot of it was just sitting there and listening. And then when it was your turn to speak, you've absorbed it all. If it's what you want, don't wait for someone else to do it for you. Do it yourself. Maggie Paul is a well-respected elder within the nation. She is Biscota Magadi, a neighboring nation whose territory is close to ours. Their language is so similar to Wolistigwe, many consider it to be the same. Maggie says she thinks an easy way for people to learn the language and its value is through song. When you hear music, you don't think of nothing else. There's no hardship, there's no the, there's no this. And when you, when you connect your music with the language, with, with the, the vibration that brings you and the melody and the moves that the music makes you move, that's how they connect. 
and that's how people will connect with it is through that because they go together the music and the language goes together it's never apart it's not an effort to learn the language in the song it just flows it just flows and you try to learn the language you try to learn you know okay there's an ah uh, there's a ah uh, there's a gate there's a e you know and all that you can know all that, you know, that, that's kind of, it's too much for me. But when I can sing it, it's much easier. It just flows, it just flows. Jeremy Dutcher is a Wollastigwe musician. His first album, which reimagined old Wollastigwe songs, has gained international success and has won two major Canadian Music Awards. Song learning and language learning have really been a connected journey for me. And I know that's not the case for everyone. And some people come to their songs first and then to their language after and sometimes vice versa too. So um, to me, they really went hand in hand. I've been able to like take lines and sentences from our language and infuse them into lyrics for, for my music. And so that's, um, you know, the fact that I get to go on stage and say, well, Lee Wincho Samogwin, Wadachwin, Gidewismu, every night. You know, that's like, it just makes it a part of my understanding now. And so it's been a great way to sort of, I guess, reinforce some of those cultural lessons that can only come through the language. You know, um, it's one thing to say, you know, thank you for the water and to, to mean it. But when we're, when we're really addressing Samogwin by its name, you know, and like, Entering it into entering into that space from that language place, I think it like takes it deeper. I think what I would say to like young language learners and people that are really trying to um, revitalize these languages and make sure that they're healthy for the next generation, um, use it every day, whatever you can, like. If you know three words, you know, thank you, please, or whatever, you know, just use it. Sometimes people think of language learning as a chore, like, oh, we gotta do this, you know, we should do this. No, no. If we view it as a gift to us that we get to unpack all the time, I think uh, it, makes, it makes it all the more exciting and fun. It is within the Wallistigwe philosophy to carry on our language, lands, and traditions for the next seven generations to come. If I am to do that, I must learn the language so that when the time comes, my children will grow up with it and feel that connection to the land we come from, Wallistiguk. For now, I'll say what I can. Nutuli was Logan Pearlie. Wallistigwe nil, Nujal Nugukuk.